Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial we will see together how to send data from a client to a server with vanilla Node.js. To achieve our goal we need less than 10 lines of code. As usual we need to set up our files, so let's create a server.js file and an index.html file. Now we need to go on the Node.js about section and grab the HTTP server code that we found there and paste it on our server.js file. Now we can start to set up our HTML. Let's start to write some titles and an HTML form that allows us to send data from the browser to our Node.js server. If you are new to web development, you should know that almost every data transmission from a client to a server pass through an HTML form, in particular through the URL. On our server.js file, we must import the FS module from which we can access to the read file method and read the content of our HTML file. The read file method accepts three arguments, the file path that we need to read, a string that specifies the encoding standard and a function that accepts true arguments, the error we could meet on reading the file and the file's data. The dear name variable is a node built-in variable that returns us a string containing the directory name of the current executing file. To render our HTML on the browser, we must wrap the server function and pass those data as the rest.end arguments. In order to achieve our goal, we must set up some JavaScript in our HTML file. The first thing that we must do is to grab the HTML form element using the query selector method and add to it an event listener that listens for a submit event. So every time that we will submit the form, the event will be triggered and the code inside of it will be executed. Now we must set up on the event the prevent default method that blocks every kind of redirection that normally submitting a form should take. After that, we will create an empty object that we will fill with the form data. We select all the form elements through a for loop that push every element key and value inside the payload object. The if condition only checks that we don't grab the submit element. The XML HTTP request object sends the data to the server. The data request must be opened with the open method that accepts five arguments but we need only the first two, the request method and the URL. With the set header method, we will set the content type of the request header. Now, if you want to check if all is working OK, we can console log our payload to check if data has been pushed inside our payload object. In order to send our data, we must convert our payload object into a string, and we can achieve this result using the stringify method of the JSON object. The last thing that we must do is to pass our payload string as the xhr.send argument. Now it's time to modify our server.js file. The first thing that we must do is to create an empty string named buffer. After that, we need to import another Node.js module named String Decoder. The String Decoder module provides an API for decoding buffer objects into strings and allows us to manage data streams. Buffer objects are used to represent a fixed length sequence of bytes. We will see these two topics in details in a moment. Now, let's assign to a variable the String Decoder API specifying the encoding standard. Now, let's see where the magic happens. Through the on method, we can listen for data event and more specifically, when the browser sends some payload to our server. I want to specify that this tutorial is only about the raw data input that we can gather from the users and do not cover other fundamental aspects like headers, HTTP method handling and so on. Now we can access the data stream. If you try to console log the stream, you can only see a string containing pairs of numbers that are representative of the data that we gather from the browser. 
As we said before, the string decoder modules allows us to decode the string data, so if you try to console log the buffer variable, you see that the server received the data object that we console log previously in the browser. The end event will be triggered when the data stream will be finished and our server will execute the end method on the string decoder module that will return any remaining input stored in the internal buffer as a string and allows us to reuse the string decoder object for new inputs. And that's all! If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and leave a thumbs up! Let me know in the comment below on which topic do you want the next videos!